Welcome back, everybody. The Prophet returns, and we are going to try for the third time tonight to play when it comes up. If it's gonna come up, Final Fantasy 13. I've been doing a little bit of research trying to lock down what exactly the problem is on why it's so crash heavy because I would love to play this game for the channel. It's an amazing game. It's beautiful. Um, I'm going to skip over the scenes that we've already seen in the last episode. Uh, something that I read just now was that like there was a bunch of different fixes that, for trying to fix the problem, but I don't know if any of them work. Uh, some of them were trying to get me to go to, like, what seemed like... I'm not a PC gamer, so I don't know, like, how to do really good patch fixes and download this and insert it into your bin and it'll fix the issues and whatnot. I'm not good at that. So, I'm just trying to do, like, the bare minimum that I can do to get it to run and run well. Um... And the last time, last couple times that it froze, it froze within these last two or these first two battles. So hopefully, I've worked it out. Um, I read something saying that running it at a super high resolution makes the game really unstable. Uh, and I had it on max resolution, not knowing that. So it was like run it at this recommended resolution, and it. <laughs> should work fine. Uh, it also said that streaming it or recording it to close out recording things, close out streaming things because it makes it crash easily, uh, which is, it defeats the purpose of me doing a run if I can't record it, you know? Like, I'm, I'm already playing through the game once on my own. Okay, I already saw this one. Uh, I was trying to think. It's like the last one that I saw that I almost got to and didn't see was whenever he was running up to like the big group of people. You missed it though and the last time that I was doing this my cat was up on my lap. She wanted to say hi so I showed her off for a second. Her name is Lulu. I have two cats. One named Lulu and one named Luna. And the Lulu is a reference to Final Fantasy X. And... Luna is for Luna Lovegood. She's a long-haired, blonde, and white cat. Um, and if I ever get a third cat, her name will be Lucatiel. Because... Dark Souls. Um, I guess Luna could also be... For... Uh, Sailor Moon, but... She's not black. She's a... Long hair, blonde, and white cat. That was the reason I named her Luna, was because Luna's got long blonde hair. I don't want to say anything to jinx it, but... We'll see how it does whenever I go into the next cutscene. I really hope it's recording it, because it is doing that weird thing where it's like sitting on one second of recording. Okay, this is the last battle that we'd have to redo from last episode. So, and it's not too far in. I'd say we're only two, three minutes in. Such a good game. I'd really, really like to get it going and do a full playthrough of it for the channel, but sorry about the close-up of my face and the shaking of the screen trying to get a little bit closer but my chair and my desk don't mesh well all right this is where the unfortunateness happened last time in the last episode and it did not happen this time levels are looking good everything's recording well We're about to meet, simultaneously, my most favorite and the least favorite characters in the whole game. <laughs> well, 
Citizens Militia. Don't let tyranny stand. If the government is bad, make a new government. It might mean you have to fight God, but... I thought that other lady was leaning up against her. She didn't move whenever she stood up, though, so... I think it's funny how he didn't ask anybody else if they were sure. But he asks the pretty lady. Least favorite character. Most favorite character. Yeah. Get it, Vanille. Bang. Like, how are you going to clear out the area? It seems gigantic. I'm not... I'm not even sure what this... The hanging edge is supposed to be. I feel like I've read the data log before and I was just like, it's a bunch of stuff left over from the creation of Cocoon. That might be the scrap works. Dude, I don't remember, honestly. I'm going to keep going through and reading the data logs uh, for the story, not for everything, but for the story. Oh, another iron bangle. Wait, no. Equipment. Go ahead and save. So that... I'm gonna... I'm probably gonna save at literally every opportunity to save because of... How unstable the game has been. Uh, so that if it randomly crashes, I can hopefully get it back up. And going at a not too far away point from where I was. It's so pretty though. Punches a guy. It's so pretty. I don't remember how far I need to go into this. Like, we're, li we're just walking back down the same place we just walked up. There's that big cross of red. Man, I can't wait to get the Crystarium. It really opens up the combat and the different... Okay, okay. Mini boss time. See bullets like ricocheting off of it and stuff. And he's like, Let's throw hands, boy. <laughs> Favorite boss battle music.
Oh, nice dodge. Every once in a while it'll happen. I wonder why Godot is like so close to the ground. Oh, thanks for the potion. I didn't even have to do it. That's awesome. I'm not going to get this thing staggered before I take it out. While playing it, thank goodness that he didn't take out, but it probably wouldn't have killed me anyways. While playing it and getting really far in the game, you really know, you really start to learn how to work the battle system well. Um, physical attacks don't do a lot of stagger damage. Magical attacks do a lot of sta stagger damage. And... And... Magic attacks bring the stagger gauge up a bunch, but it also make it drop really fast. So what you gotta do, and like physical attacks do the opposite. They don't bring it up very much, but they don't make it, they make it drop really slowly. So what you gotta do is like mix the two. You gotta have a lot of magic attacks and a lot of physical attacks so that the stagger goes up quickly, but also doesn't go down really quickly. I'm trying to remember. Okay, I was going to say, what explosion happens? It was the thing she just shot, except it's it shot a laser beam while it was falling. Yeah, that's really horrific. Just all these people falling and screaming and falling. It reminds me of that scene from Akira. Like, almost exactly. God bless you got some finger strength, boy. <laughs> he doesn't even have, like, a full handhold. It's just half. And... He's able to hold not only his own body weight, but the body weight of an entire other person for a minute. Still, though, impressive. Now, remember that scene. Did Snow kill her? I don't think so. He looks pretty torn up about it. And he also did his darndest to save her. It's a really big point of contingency for this guy right here. This is why he's my least favorite character. Snow killed my mother! He really didn't, though. You deserve that slap. And I wish you'd get slapped more. Snow gets punched way more than is necessary. Like I said in the last one, I don't think he's a bad guy. He seems pretty... Yeah, we'll go ahead and say... Crap, I didn't... Okay, okay, I did. <laughs> I was like, crap. But... He doesn't seem like a bad guy. He's like good goals oriented, driven, um, tries to do the right thing. I don't know why everybody hates him in the universe. Uh, I don't, I haven't seen a lot of hate for snow on the player base, but there could be, I'm not sure. I haven't really looked too, too much into it because it's a lot of people hating on the game, and I don't like seeing it because this game is amazing, and I've loved it for a long time. Crap. Drop my controller. Okay. Alright, don't freak out because I reconnected my controller, please.
Uh, well, there are different divisions, and they do have different tasks. So I'm gonna guess that... Psycom is... Special Forces. Guardian Corps is... The police? Maybe? Maybe a better, a more apt description would be Guardian Corps is the police, Psycom is SWAT. I don't know. I, I, I can't put real life equivalencies to it because I'm not sure. This guy's not that bad if I remember correctly, Marmadon. Really focusing on saws, huh? Alright, I got a potion or else he's gonna die. Yes, focus on me some. Really didn't want to have to use a potion, but you kind of forced me to. Yeah, we got him. He's not that bad. Honestly, the battles aren't super terrible in this. They're not, like, ridiculously hard. There's only a couple enemies that I really have issues with, and they're, like, further down the line. Such a cool weapon design, man. It's so cool. You'll see Squall's Gunblade folding into a little tiny carrying case. So where did Snow fall from? I mean, I know where he fell from, but like, where above there did he fall from? Because... Why did he survive? And she didn't. From same height. He doesn't have Lassie powers right now, you know? So it's not like he has a bunch of magic or anything that kept him safe. Neil. The reason that she is my favorite character of the game is because I was going through a rough time in my life and she said a lot of stuff that really just resonated with me. Um, not that particularly, but she's really like my lot in life I can't do anything about it except keep going and it you just gotta keep smiling even if you're afraid that kind of outlook that is what I really she wasn't my favorite character the first time I played the game first time I played the game my favorite character was most likely lightning but when I replayed it and I had a bit more life experience, I was like, wow, Vanilla is a really well written character. Yeah, cool, huh? She can do it, so can we. <laughs> yeah, but you don't have an anti-grab snap. I hate, <laughs> and it's like, 
He didn't even hold on and then drop. Like, even if that, even though that wasn't gonna help at all, he's just like, let me do it backwards and then fall. <laughs> Hey, good -o. Yeah, cause that's how you deal with someone who's unconscious. <laughs> Wake up! Wake up! That's horrific. I'd say similar fates. Oh, are you talking about your team? Probably not. Main side characters don't tend to die very often. Hey, get a grip, man. What's wrong with you? Well, trauma. Get him home. Get him home. Oh, I was, I was like, who the heck was piloting that thing to just run it into that? But that's the thing that lightning and saws jumped off of. It was just going on autopilot after that, and I guess it just hit that thing. I never noticed that. What are you doing? So what are you afraid of, huh? You're supposed to be the hero. <laughs> She's waiting there, ain't she? Your lovely bride to be. Isn't it about time you picked her up? I never particularly liked snow and sarah together because it's just because of the size difference if i'm being honest snow's like two times her height it's very unnerving to see whenever they're standing beside each other and sarah comes up to like his belly button Let's go, dude. Power circle. The circle? Circlet. That was a weapon for him, right? Yeah. Okay, what's 32, 32, 40, 20? He's not using any magic, so let's go ahead and give him more power. Get rid of all these real quick. Filter. I wonder what that refers to whenever it's referring to the enemy, the hand thing that they have. Actually, let me read that real quick. Guardian Corps responsible for maintaining security in various jurisdictions throughout the cocoon and SICOM, Public Security and Intelligence Command. So yeah, I was kind of right. Guardian Corps is kind of like regular police and Psycom is like SWAT. And the Hanging Edge, let's see that too. The luck of the days before the war of transgression, the Hanging Edge is located near Cocoon's Outer Rim. Or it was once thriving urban center, but residents were forced to abandon the location when an attack from Pulsian forces cracked Cocoon's shell. So that's that big rip you see in it. It's a restricted zone, civilian access prohibited. Hmm. The peaceful citizens of Cocoon live in constant fear of invasion by the forces of Pulse, the world below, and supposed home of terrors unknown. Where even... Were even a single Pulsian, Pulsian agent to be discovered on Cocoon, panic and civil unrest would be sure to follow, threatening the very fabric of society. To prevent such a calamity, the Sanctum's Cocoon's, oh, the Sanctum, Cocoon's governing body, initiates the Purge, a government initiative officially entailing the dis deportation of all those who have come in contact with corrupt Pulsian influences. That was a mouthful. However, the Sanctum army is now brutally slaughtered is now brutally slaughtering the civilians they are supposed to be deporting. Realizing that the purge is no more than an act of... is nothing more than a massacre in disguise, Snow leads the young freedom fighters of Nora in an effort to protect the purge deportees and the Sanctum soldiers. From the Sanctum soldiers. The purge is 
a sanctum initiative design <laughs> designed to protect the stability of cocoon by forcing potentially dangerous civilians to relocate to pulse however the relocation is simply a facade to cover up a massacre that ensues the government's true goal is brutal extermination of all possible threats to the peaceful society having discovered her the horrific truth Snow leads the members of Nora against the government soldiers of Psycom. Inspired by the actions of a handful of brave young men and women, the beleaguered citizens take heart and join the battle in hope of returning to a normal life. Among the citizens who stand against the forces of Psycom is a mother who wishes nothing more than to protect her son. Coon citizens have always been terrified of Pulse and the mysterious horrors that are said to stalk its hostile wastelands. Their fear is so great that if Cocoon, if a Cocoon native were to have been even the briefest contact with Pulsian elements, former friends and neighbors would consider them corrupt and dangerous. In light of this fact, the Sanctum orders the purging of Bodum in an effort to remove all potentially pulse-tainted civilians. According to soldiers, accordingly, soldiers round up all those identified as candidates for relocation and inform them of their impending exile. However, Psycom, the elite arm of the Sanctum military, then begins to massacre the helpless civilians. This prompts Snow to lead the people in a rebellion against the army. Tragically, one of the civilians who decides to follow him, hoping to protect her son, dies in an act of, in the act of saving Snow's life. Seems not right there. From afar, the boy witnesses the moment of his mother's death in shock and disbelief. Yeah, uh, I guess he was saving her life. Or, I guess she was saving his life by shooting the thing down. But then he was saving he was trying to save her life for sure massive object is transported through the sky over the hanging edge this object is a pulse this is a pulse vestige and other a lower world artifact that had been nothing more than a bodum landmark two days ago it was discovered that the vestige housed a long dormant pulse foul sea the foul sea had slumbered undisturbed on the outskirts of the cocoon city for centuries the sanctum decrees that the presence of the pulse entity is and its corrupting magics have tainted the entire population of the city and ordered the purge. For different reasons, lightning saws now have now make their way towards the very being that it was the catalyst for so much tragedy. Snow, meanwhile, is crushed by feelings of guilt after many die under his command. He only emerges from his gloom when Godot reminds him that the foul sea is holding a certain young lady captive who needs her hero now more than ever. I wonder if we look around. Yep, it's right there. I was like, if we look up into the sky, can we see the thing? There's the pulse vestige. Oh, great. Mike, you better not miss both times. <laughs> really shouldn't have missed the first time, but whatever. Really hoping the levels are good, because I'm not redoing this. It's the third time. It's the only time that it's worked well. I'm glad I read that thing about higher resolution making it more unstable, because it has really helped. It's like I could hear it. 100 gil. Gil is few and far between. So that's why I'm like, I try not to buy potions or Phoenix Downs or anything like that. I try to use everything as sparingly as possible because skill is very hard to come by in the beginning. And if you save up all you've got before you get to the point where you can like start making new weapons and stuff, uh, you can really jumpstart the grinding that you have to do to get the best weapons in the game. Which I sadly have never done, but I'm working towards doing on the playthrough that I'm doing on my own time. Talk about strong punches, though. He just punched that guy into oblivion. Disappeared in a... 
A black mist. <laughs> Why is it sad? What? You mean like a motorcycle? Do people think the sound of a motorcycle is like soulful? Can't please everybody. You got plenty of time for thinking on the way, hero. Yeah. Ready. Well, I'm like, why are we taking the time to? Make this into like a race. Seems like it should be a time oriented thing. We should be trying to move quick. Very cool vehicle design, though. Who tried to save your mom? Yeah, that is the one that tried to save your mom. Thanks for trying to save my mom. I really appreciate it. I'm not going to be a pretentious butthole the rest of the game. Don't worry. I appreciate what you did. And I will <laughs> try to help and not be... A backstabber. That was... <laughs> the double head slap. Well, when I started. I mean, it can't be that loud. He's sitting in it, you know? And they're like talking casually. I like the girl. She's like, what? What did I do? <laughs> Is there anything over here? I don't think there is. Yep, does not appear to be anything. Huh. <sighs> Yeah, let's do it. I probably should have gone around and seen if there was something up there, but honestly, I don't think there is. And even if there was, it would only help early game. Like, I've got iron bangles and stuff all over the place in my later save file, but I don't use any of them because it's only plus 50. Like, I've got platinum bangles that are plus 200 or whatever. <laughs> Did you just say he thinks that he can run that? like asking a 12 year old hey you think you can ride this motorcycle 
and not like a pocket rocket or whatever the tiny ones are for, like the tiny ones for little kids are called. I'm talking about like 500cc motorcycle. Well, better take off. Yeah, uh-oh. It's not a video game, dude. But that's okay, because we can defy our fate. We write our own fate. We do it with a smile. Yeah, we'll go ahead and save. Crashes. Where's the what? Are you looking for something specific? Oh. Well, it's like, what is she looking for in this place that she's never been? She's looking for the way out. I don't know if, is that a... I think that's like a prayer. Like how in 12 they say Faram, which is like Amen. I'm sorry. I will try to hold in my disdain for hope. It'll be tough. So I really don't like him. I also really like Vanille's weapon. It's so cool. The Pulse Falci. Lower World Vestige. My super cool weapon. Deer antlers. That's actually a fishing rod. I love that she's actually doing like the moves that she does in combat. That that little thing that she was doing there that was like all of her attack animations. I've got a boomerang, don't worry. A foldable boomerang, so... It is a really cool weapon, though. I really love Vanille's weapon. Just because it's, like, super unique. It's, like... I... I want to meet the person who came up with that and be like, "What was the concept behind that? What was what were what were you trying to like embody with it?" Oh, but this is the way to an item. Thirty gil, <laughs> basically nothing. Here another one. Yeah, it's right there. Of people. Ah. I also don't tend to let battles go by. Just the more battles you get into, the more Crystarium points you get, the more uh, you can level up your characters. Um, it takes a lot of Crystarium points to level up 
later game too so like the more you can do at the start of it to help with that really makes a difference it's the same reason I always do it's the same reason I always do the uh, fight them choice whenever you're playing Final Fantasy 7 and you're running away and you get ready to jump on the train and it's like run away or fight them I always fight them because if you fight them a little bit of XP each time I mean, it's not like, you know, it's not a ton, but it's enough to be, you know, something. I feel like Snow was saying that to me because I looked at the save point and I was like, keep going, we just saved. He's like, we really shouldn't push our luck. Oh, I'm hoping. Doing all right. We'll go ahead and save. Now that we cleared out that top area. Did it just spawn another panther on right there? I think it did. It totally did. That's okay. I don't need to do that again. Yeah, yeah. I, I already know. It's okay. They're just... Zwerg droids. I don't know what they're called. Zwerg. Yeah, that was right. Zwerg. Scan droids. Yeah, that was... I had... 70% of it. Another iron bank. I always tend to equip uh, things that increase health on the main character that you're playing as because unlike previous and later Final Fantasy games, if your main character goes down, you lose. It's game over. Uh, that was one thing I really didn't like about the combat system. It was like, why can't I? I've got Phoenix Downs. Like, I can only use Phoenix Downs on you know, the side characters. Snow still cannot shake this feeling of guilt. Despite his efforts to protect the purge deportees from the Sanctum forces, many have fallen. The death of one woman in particular haunts his thoughts. A mother fighting for the sake of her son, who gave her life to save Snow, as he was trying to save her. In the moments before her death, the woman begged the leader of Nora to take care of her child, but slipped from Snow's grasp without revealing the boy's identity. With Godot's help, Snow breaks out of his depression, he figures out that if he's just goes ahead and protects everyone, then the woman's son will be saved as well. After checking to see if the children are safe, Snow leaves the waning battle to his fellow Nora members and sets off with new determination towards the vestige. His fiance is still held captive by Pulse Falci. A boy watches him leave, eyes filled with rage and loathing to his grief-stricken grief, grief mind. That was weird. Snow is responsible for his mother's death. But he's not, though. For centuries, the Pulse Foul Sea has slumbered undisturbed on the outskirts of Cocoon City. On the day the lower world entity is finally discovered, Cocoon's peaceful society is plunged into chaos. The government judges the city's inhabitants to have been tainted by their unwelcome guest and begins a merciless campaign to expunge both the Foul Sea and the corrupted citizenry of off the face from the face of Cocoon. Instead of an exile they were led to expect, the civilians face extermination at the hands of the Sanctum Army. The people attempt to fight back, but are hopelessly outmatched by the military. Lightning cuts their way through the battlefield, doggedly followed by the desperate Saz. Snow, meanwhile, seeks to rescue his fiancée, and a boy spurred on by his dreams of revenge pursues Snow 
with the help of an unusual young lady. Though driven by separate goals, their paths all lead to the same end, the Pulse Val Sea. Hope has fallen into a panic. In his single-minded pursuit of snow, he has rushed into the lair of the Foul Sea and is only now recalling the terrible nature of the being that lurks within. The Pulse Entity could use its power to curse them, to turn them into the sea. Pulse Sea are doomed servants of the Foul Sea who created them, despised and feared by the people of Cocoon. Hope's companion, Vanille, seems unconcerned by this dreadful possibility. Amused by her indomitable cheerfulness, he nervously follows her in search of snow. It was Snow who convinced his mother to fight. It was Snow she was protecting when she died. And it was Snow who must be made to pay. All three of those things were lies. Because Snow did not convince her to fight. She stood up and volunteered. He even asked her, are you sure? And she said, yeah. And then he wasn't... She wasn't protecting him when she died. He was protecting her. Kind of both, I guess. And he does not need to pay. So those were all lies. No daydreaming. <laughs> no daydreaming when you're fighting a giant <laughs> mechanical feline. These things bring to mind the uh, laser tigers from the Dune universe. Like, a giant cat creature that can be controlled through a chip. I think we're almost out of time. So, I'll probably call it here the next 10 minutes or so. Sure, Pulse is Earth compared to Cocoon. Rude much? This area really reminds me of the Dynast King's tomb in 12. Not only because of the, you know, little things that you can change the layout of the place with, but also, like, the architecture is very reminiscent of it. With, like, the squares on top of squares on top of squares. This stuff that's super Dynast King. Uh... I was going to try and make it to the point where we all get powers, but that might be a little too far. Let me look at something. So it sure, I'm sure it says hour and 13, hour and... I've been going for about 45 minutes. Yes, cancel the save operation. But if I remember correctly, that's probably like 40 minutes away still. Um, I don't like making the videos too long because my internet's not really that good. So uploading them takes a really long time to upload like an hour long video. It's like, it's like 12 hours. Uh, 
it's not due to the package that I choose or the provider that I choose because, well, it is due to the provider, but it's also like I don't have another choice of provider with where I live. It's, uh, you got one choice and it's all copper wire. We don't have fiber optics. Other people on the line that I'm at the very end of the line. And so the other people who use the internet up the road and stuff take away from the bandwidth it's just it's not great i'll put it that way it's the only thing i really really don't like about living where i live it's beautiful and it uh, is secluded so i don't have to deal with many people but it definitely could use some uh quality of life improvements i really am hoping that when starlink becomes available or some kind of like full-on satellite internet high-speed satellite internet that would be amazing so do I go back up to where the middle part was and then oh okay now we're just gonna skip thought about getting that symbol because it's the uh, brand for the Lassie I thought about getting that as a tattoo it's just uh, it would be a large area <laughs> I love Saws being the comic relief. He so does a decent job with it. It's just cutting you a bunch, but I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. me so I'm already walking in such a crazy super extra door okay okay I have a fortisol um the fortisol deceptisol agisol they're all really good but they're also really rare. Um, I can count on one hand in the course of the playthrough that I've done on my own time, how many times I've used them. And it's like when a big boss battle is happening, I might throw on an Aegisol and a Fortisol to give me, you know, starting haste and shell and wall or you know, like, starting buffs to help out at the beginning. They don't last forever, either. It's not like a full battle thing. They last a really long time. They don't last the entire battle. If you take a long time with the battle, I mean. Boss lady. Girl boss. We've got time to do one more, so. If 
the unnecessary backflips that she does. There's when she gets her fourth, I think it's her fourth attack move. Um, she gets a super unnecessary backflip. <laughs> it's just it's super cool though because it's like attack, 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 and then she backflips and her gun transforms and she shoots while in the backflip. It's so cool. It's it's so extra. Another Myrmidon. Phoenix down. What up, Myrmidon? I don't know how he did not see me. But I'll take the preemptive strike. Whoa, what was that camera? That was weird. It intentionally dodged me. That wasn't accidental dodges on its part. It, like, straight up intentionally dodged those two attacks that I did. We got this thing. Come on. Gotcha. Oh! Now I gotcha. <laughs> I was like, how did it... Its life was gone, you know? Huh. <sighs> I'm not going to bother with the Zerg Jords that were down there. There wasn't very many, and if I'm going to try and get to where the where we get our powers, because I'm thinking about just letting it go and doing it, uh, I don't want to waste too much time getting in unnecessary battles. I already had a couple of them this, this time, so... I mean, they knew it was there. Oh, yes. Way better weapon for lightning. Crap. Because, like, 15... No, no, hold on. 30. But, again, I don't have any magic. And I use lightning as a... Uh, melee person, first and foremost. I get to these real fast. To the citizens of Cocoon, the lower world of Pulse is a hell rife with unknown terrors, and the recently discovered Pulse Val C is an invader from that hell. In an effort to quell the growing panic in the wake of the Eternal Entity's discovery, the Sanctum initiates the extreme measure known as the Purge. Under this initiative, not only is the Val C to be cast out of Cocoon, but all the civilians living nearby as well. Any person coming into contact with the lower world's being's foul energies could already be corrupt, and no potential enemies of Cocoon can be allowed to remain. The ensuing deportation claims the lives of countless civilians, Hope's mother among them. After witnessing her death and chasing Snow into the vestige in a blind rage, Hope suddenly realizes that he may soon share the same fate as the Pulse Foul Sea. Relocation to the world below. Benil, however, calmly accepts the situation and lends her support to the distraught boy. Unaware of, the young pursuer, of the, his young pursuers, Snow begins exploring the arcane halls and chambers of the shrine-like vestige in search of his captive fiancé, Sarah. Whew. The Pulse Foul Sea's an entity that threatens the peace of the cocoon society, holds Snow's fiancé captive. As a determined Snow delves even deeper into the alien structure, lightning and saws arrive at the vestige after fighting their way through waves of sanctum forces. The unlikely duo's pr progress is halted by an impassable gate, which finally opens as if in response to lightning's whispered words of an apology. Did her plea reach the mind of the foul sea, or was it another being responsible for opening the portal? Saws follows the ex-soldier into the vestige, amused of the lack of, of, by the lack of explanation but driven on nonetheless by the purpose he has yet to reveal. Ugh. Trying to read those quick. <laughs> tongue ties me. Trying to read them slow tongue ties me too. There's a couple of them that were like, they were just using 10 cent words all over the place and it was very difficult to string them all together. take two more. Okay, you can take one more. 
I'm gonna try and just kill this thing. I don't think I'll be able to, but I really don't want to waste a Phoenix down on him and then a potion on both of us. I might have to, though. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. Okay, well... It's okay, because I'll restart right at the beginning of the battle. That's fine. First, first KO of the playthrough right there. Just because I kept blitzing when I just need to attack the Pantheron. Yes, turn to me. Thank you. Jeez. All right. All right, he can take one more. Ah, oh, yes, he turned to me. Thank goodness. Really didn't want to, but I didn't really have a choice. Jeez, with the camera, I don't know what it does whenever it's like all over the place. <laughs> Those things are still around. Might be some soldiers trapped in here too. Except they'd probably be Le Cee by now. Huh? Not even human anymore. This supposed Le Cee. Who am I switching to now? Snow. Back to snow. This is the only reason this area takes so long, is because you're going through it with three different people, you know? Nothing. There's one there. Nothing on that side. I really love his necklace. I love Lightning's necklace too, and I'd love to get one of them. They're so expensive though. Lightning's necklace is like $200 for this little tiny, it's like this big, and it's just a lightning thing. I mean, it's got gemstones in it, but it's still, it's, it's crazy. If I was to get one of them though, that's the one I would get because I don't like super huge, Ostensible? No. What's the word I'm looking for? I can't think of it, but gaudy would be another word for it, where it's just like really ridiculous and big and flashy. I like subtler stuff. Like, you probably didn't even realize that I have earrings, but I do. They're just little tiny hoops. I usually wear a necklace since I took it off a minute ago, but it's right here. But it's just this little tiny crescent moon. Thank you for rescuing, trying to rescue my mother. I really appreciate it. No, but you can also. Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> I, 
I really don't think it it can be ex uh, explained how much I dislike the character of Snow or er, Hope. Drop that. So no. Well, okay, I was just gonna run past it, but guess not. That oh, it's two pamperons. Ah, oh, Vanille, so chipper. already that one's already used I'm gonna give it like two or three more save points and if we don't get back to where if we don't get to a point where I'm like all right I know we're close then I'll call it because it is it's going on a while now I really would like to get through it though, so that I can next time open up. We have the Crystarium. We're actually starting to get better into the combat. Yay yeah. us! Yeah, I almost ran past that. What you got? Basically nothing. Okay, I was going to say, I remember the little guys, but I remember fighting the big guy with lightning and saws. Am I playing the snow or? Yep, playing the snow. I would have honestly rather played as Vanille. She's got three uh, ATV slots. I always wondered why she had three ATV slots, but I know now because I've gotten further into the game. What's wrong with you? Why do you want to help the sea? They're the enemy. 
I just realized I have Neil's earrings on. Let's go with him. Well, not quite. You gotta talk to him, bro. If you don't get Hers are chance, pointed at the bottom there, but silver hoops. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Such beautiful music. The music really is pristine in this game. So if people become cocoon Lassie, are they scared of her? Or uh, scared of them? Do cocoon Lassie even exist? I don't know why he had to... Actually was. I get that it's like motivation to, no way to, turn back into a do their focus um, or become this focus. horrible monstrosity, but it seems really counterproductive to be like, we'll make these slaves basically and then... And then get rid of them if they don't do what they're told. It. It's people like you that started the purge in the first place. Yeah, with your fear of the unknown, fear of anything that's different. I mean, granted, I would be scared of those things, but. Just because something is different doesn't inherently make it a bad thing or something to be scared of. Nice dodge lightning. Also, I think the Gladius looks just super cool. Like, I like the Blaze Fire Saber, it, but that's only because of the mechanics of it. How it, like, folds up and stuff. This has the same mechanics. It just looks cooler, in my opinion. This has got the big, wide, crazy-looking blade. We'll go ahead and give Lightning the power wristband to make her stronger because I use her as a melee person, and we'll give Saws the iron bangle. So he has less of a chance to go down when we're fighting stuff. Is there anything down here? Man, there better be with this big, long walkway down here. Okay, well, no, because that one's already used, so. I was like, I wonder if it's going to put me in a battle with that other, the flying thing that I just saw, but no. It's just this one ghoul, which we handily defeated.
I am planning on doing a Final Fantasy VII Remake uh, series for the channel as well. But there's a couple of things I want to do before I start it. The main one is to beat the game. I've platinumed the Seven Remake on PS4, but I want to beat the game so that I can play through it on hard mode. So that it's like something a little bit different. But I'm also kind of waiting uh, because I recently let my brother borrow my PS4 so that he could play through the Seven Remake. He is It's like his, one of his favorite games of all time and he hasn't been able to play it because he didn't have a PS4 and he doesn't have a PC. Um, so I let him borrow that and I don't want to start uploading stuff because I feel like I think he's the he's one of the only people that watches all my stuff all the way through and I don't want him to have to like not watch my stuff because he doesn't want spoilers you know he's re he's really avoided watching any watching or reading anything about the seven remake um since it came out and that was like two years ago but I did just beat the integrate DLC on PC the other day. It was good. Um, I kind of wish that they had done one more DLC for it. It didn't even necessarily have to be one with the main cast of characters. It could have been like something something real short. Like something following Reeve or something, you know, who's Kate Sith, uh, or Ketchy, or however you want to say it. I'm going to say Kate Sith. I'm going to pronounce things how I've pronounced them forever until it starts saying, it starts to say them in-game because before they had voice acting and you had to work through it and figure out how to pronounce everything on your own. I came up with a lot of my own ways of saying stuff. I used to I used to call it Mako, Mako energy, not Mako energy, but they say Mako now, so I'll say Mako now. Um, it's Tifa, not Tifa, but they say Tifa, so I'll say Tifa. Yuffie was yuffy and so on. It's the same general idea. It, it's not too much of a leap to change it just a little bit for the sake of correct continuity. Save points are so cool looking in this, by the way. It's like, it's a really crazy computer is basically what it is. It's got like a bunch of buttons up here and a bunch of buttons over here and a bunch of buttons down here. It's so cool looking. In the interest of trying to save time, I won't do any more data logs this time, and I'll read through them the next time when we jump in. I don't know how I got a preemptive strike on him, but that's good because he's now dead. But when you get a preemptive strike on these things between me and Saws, it's very handily defeated. Even whenever we don't have a preemptive strike, it's pretty easy. Dilly dally shilly shally. Dilly dally shilly shally. That's a little better. Alright. This is the one I was a little bit worried about because it's like... One of them can be tough, so two of them together is... 
but it doesn't seem like they do too much damage. I got fire though. I'll probably have to use one potion. Maybe not. I don't think... I've only been hit twice by that guy. So... Even if he's able to do three more attacks on us combined, I still think we'd be alright. Yeah, like if he hit lightning one more time and he hit Sauls one more time, we'd still be alive. And we almost have him, so. Perfect. Don't know. Okay. Well. That's what I get for pushing it trying to get through so all right well it was a long one we'll call it there and uh you know dang all right it doesn't seem like i fixed it entirely but it, it, it did do a lot better because like i said it was like the first two battles it was just crashing so if you enjoyed please like comment subscribe let me know what you thought what your favorite moments were who your favorite character is that sort of thing and uh until the next time I'll see ya. Peace out. Have a great day.